Hi, this is Swati from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and today we are here with the most commonly asked question, how to apply for a QA job. Before we go any further, I would like to very, very clearly say that there are no there is really no cookbook formula. There is really no recipe for success. However, software testing help has been in the training industry and also uh, has been a major you know, website contributing to the QA field for a long time now. So our readers and our course participants have actually shared their interview experiences with us, uh, their job sharing journeys. So this has given us a little bit of an insight on how to simplify this process. So let's actually go ahead Let's get started and see, you know, what we think are a few tips and tricks that can help you with your job application process. Now, we believe that there are three R's that are crucial here. Number one, readiness. Second, your resume. Third, the research. The very first one, readiness. What I really have to say about readiness is I have, I have come across many students of the program who think that they will only apply for a job probably next year after the holidays or maybe in a few months now or when they feel ready. So all of these are abstract senses of you know what exactly readiness means. So what I really tell them is that there will never come a time when you'll wake up in a, on a particular day in the morning and feel like you're completely ready to take on the job market. That's never going to happen. Readiness is something that we consciously have to work towards and have to have an objective approach towards. So what we recommend at STH is that whatever job you're applying for, so if it's an automation tester's job, if it's a you know fresher job as a QA, or if it's a QA lead job, first very, very well understand what exactly do you need to qualify for that position? What do you need to know? What do you know already? What do you have to learn? So try to work on this. So this is a checklist that we provide to all of our, you know, um, QA uh, you know, fundamentals batch students is we give a list of all the basic skills and tools that you really need to be good at in order to qualify for the basic QA tester or a QA engineer's job. Now you can make one that is similar to this depending on the designation that you aspire to. Now as you can see this is a very very simple very very raw checklist that has like you know a few details about uh, what more like you know the few development methodologies, testing processes, uh, the other uh, tools, other skills like SQL, database, MS Office and you know the other good to have skills like certification and things like that. So once you have what you're working towards all set clearly in front of you, I would recommend printing this out, putting it on a wall and working on it every single day uh, in a disciplined fashion. Now typically I recommend taking about two to six weeks time depending on what your schedules are to work on readiness. Now the more time we give ourselves we procrastinate the less time we give ourselves, we kind of feel pressure. So two to six weeks time, in my opinion, is optimum. Uh, but whatever works for you, pick that amount of time and you know work towards being very much um, ready for the position. Next comes resume. Now, we all think that the very first step of job search is resume, but it happens to be the second one because once you learn all the skills, resume is a place for you to showcase that, to be proud of that, to, you know, um, to put your accomplish uh, accomplishments on. So it's like a wall of fame where you are trying to like, you know, boast yourself of the things that you know. Now there are many ways in which you can create a resume, but what I recommend is whichever way that you choose, make sure that your resume is correct. It is skill based, not experience based and that it is a reflection of you as a professional, not anybody else or you know, not anybody else's idea of what you should be. There are many articles on our site that you can check. Uh, all you have to do is go to software testing help and search for resume and you'll find it there. Now I'm not going to go there uh, because I want to show you the cover letter a little bit head on. Um, these are the samples that are available on our website as well. So this is a sample short form of a resume where some companies are looking for one to two page resumes only. This is more applicable for experienced professionals, uh, but you will find a sample of this, you know, the exact same thing on our site as well. And then there is the traditional long form of the resume where we have given like, you know, elaborate information. We also have talked about how to 
you know incorporate keywords and make it more effective and stuff like that so remember the most important section of your resume is a professional summary because it is said that employers take about 20 to 30 seconds to review a resume and come up with whether they whether or not they want to pursue um, you know the person whose resume it is so be sure to write an effective professional summary again this does not mean using flamboyant words or you know complicated sentences on the contrary keep it simple talk about skills if you think educational experience will work against you don't write about it if you think you know lack of experience or having gaps in your career is going to affect you do not write about it talk about your skills as long as you possess the necessary skills that will qualify you for the job nothing else really matters so more on this in the articles or you know we probably will do a follow-up uh, video on this but um, you know make a resume that is really really all about you now another very important tip is do not have any spelling mistakes grammatical errors or you know uh, unexpected page breaks formatting issues in your resume make sure that your resume is uh, done diligently and is in a presentable way now once you are done with that next comes research now the sources of job search what kind of job searches do you want to apply what is the trends of jobs in your particular uh, area where you live so all of these things you can determine when you do some research and these these days research is very very simple all you have to do is just you know um, check social networking sites like LinkedIn or you could also probably look at job portals like Nokri, Monster, Indeed, Dice and all of those and you can look for a job. Now circulate your resume among your friends that's a great way to earn references the next thing is create a profile for yourself on social media like LinkedIn uh, and if you have any contributed to any other professional blogs or if you have any other professional accomplishments be sure to highlight that and thirdly and the most uh, approachable form of job search is job portals like Nokri.com that I'm seeing here now you can post your resume here and wait for the employer to get in touch with you on the other hand you can search for jobs here and apply for them apply to them through these portals by yourself now when you're searching for jobs here let's say I'm testing searching for a QA testers role and that's what I think is my title let's assume now here I'm seeing say 3632 jobs now search smart that means think of all the keywords some companies might refer to the same functional testing job as I mean frame same QA testers job as a functional testers job some companies might call it manual testers some companies might call it test engineer some companies might call it uh, software test engineer so there are really really many many names that you can use to refer to to the same job so search smart and be sure to find those jobs once you do apply for these jobs along with the cover letter so a cover letter is something where you are introducing yourself and explaining to the employer why you are writing to them or why you are getting in touch with them now I've seen many kinds of cover letters ranging from two lines to two pages so what we have to really keep in mind here is when a company I mean when an employer is looking at your resume they spend 20 to 30 seconds uh, so something that is as important as a resume gets such less attention now you can imagine uh, what kind of attention a cover letter would get so it's not advisable to write pages and pages of it keep it clear keep it concise so this is a sample that we have here you would introduce yourself you would talk about your qualification um, and you will also talk about why you think you are fit for this job like you know your core uh, core key skills then you'll talk about why you're getting in touch with the employer is it regarding a job job posting have you heard that there's a job opening from a friend so whatever is the source you go ahead and mention that attach your resume and then you know thank them for the opportunity um, you know to get in touch with them so that is all that you need in a cover letter now next would be your you know the employer uh, would look at your resume if it is a match they would get in touch with you and all of those things now a lot of times I get this question why are employers not getting in touch with me even though I have provided all the details that I could so few reasons could be the query itself is sloppy that means you might send a cover late cover note with spelling mistakes you might have misspelled the HR or company name um, so some these kind of things are not taken easily so spelling mere errors formatting problems 
grammatic errors so these are not taken too kindly in the industry so be sure that you are not sending a sloppy query and the second thing is a lot of times we misunderstand job postings and apply for a job even though the skill set does not match so for the skill set matching what I recommend doing is read through the job description not just the title so even though some company might call the role a functional tester what they might be expecting from you might be completely different so be sure to re read through the job description very very well and also remember that there will never be a job posting that is tailor-made for any one person in the industry so if the employer is asking for say let's let's say 10 things 10 criteria for um, you know the particular job there will never be a person who fits all the 10 criteria so what we have to evaluate is are we satisfying at least 75 to 80 percent of the criteria that we see and if yes that's when we apply for the job so do not send uh, sloppy queries make sure that this your skill set you understand the skill set that is required for the job correctly and then you apply appropriately so with these tips we think that the job search process could get a little easier and we can work towards it uh, with a conscious purpose and a kind of like you know a more enhanced awareness as always, we have our blog and you can always leave your comments about this video below. Thank you very much.